Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about an article here on eFinancial Careers titled Family Offices Where Quant Careers Go to Die. Uh, there are some truths to this, and there are, I think, some oversimplifications. We're going to talk about this. Um, if you're not familiar with eFinancial Careers, I'm going to put a little bit of a caveat here, a little star up at the top. E-Financial Careers is kind of the gossip website of the finance world. So you'll find all kinds of articles on like, you know, top MD, leave Citibank for Barclays or, you know, leading expert at Citadel. I don't know. AI division leaves to go to a Southern firm. Like it's really gossipy. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but from time to time, they have some interesting statements. This is one of them. It's an interesting statement. Not always truthful as these are just, you know, journalists turning out uh, content. Um, also, they took two of my videos, two separate authors on here, and turned them into articles, basically, and added a few commentary points and their own opinions on this. Um, I would have appreciated if they would have notified me, um, but one person did not do anything. They just watched a video and wrote an article. Um, the other person watched a video and then messaged me a question and being the guy that I am, I answered the question because that's just what I do. And then they took the answer to my question and went and added that into their article, um, which I also was not very appreciative of because they didn't tell me they were going to be publishing it or using any of my commentary. But luckily, some of my amazing subscribers point these articles out and show me um, that they're on the internet. So anyways, without further ado, let's dive in here to where quants go to die here in family offices. Um, the summary of the article, I'll let you guys read it if you want. I'll, I'll put a link below. It's very, very short and not much value, but I'll talk about some other things with it. Uh, it basically talks about, you know, Family offices pay less than the big firms. Um, it also talks about, you know, to really learn and generate good ideas, um, quants need to be around other quants, which is also true. And they also point out that family offices often hire only a couple people because they're small. Uh, and what they're really wanting is you to like generate all this value for them. And yet they often don't have an entire framework around quants here. So these are excellent points, um, and I will caveat with this. In general, I do not work for small firms. Oh, I know, I'm working for a small firm now. Um, I have a lot more faith in them, though, than most small firms, which is why I'm here. But let's point out a few advantages of small firms and talk about some of the risks of small firms. Uh, the number one risk, though, of working at a small firm, I don't think it's the compensation. Um, I think the main issue with this is you are just not going to have the framework around you. Uh, it takes a very, very unique quant um, to work with almost no support team. And what I mean by this is, you know, quants are a piece of the puzzle here. So you have to have data. So let's, let's rewind. The business needs to have its problem and it needs to tell you its problems and it needs to tell you it needs a model to do something. Small firms often don't have this. Um, you have to come up with a problem and a solution all at the same time as a quant, which is very odd. I know. Uh, but when you work at a big firm, the business has a problem. They come to you with a problem. They tell you, hey, we need to create a new strategy for, I don't know, something. Um, or, you know, we need to have better loss models for X, Y, and Z, or these models are failing. We need to replace them. Small firm, often the problems are not easily defined. And so often senior management, you know, yells and screams they want value out of the quants. And they're not going to get value out of the quants because they can't communicate with the quants what they actually need. That's number one issue with this. Um, the other piece with this is going to be um, just all the steps and processes around that. So they need to identify the problem, but then you need to have a whole data team and a data engineering team and all that um, to support data inflows, purchasing data from vendors, um, data quality, data restrictions. There's regulations on who has access to specific types of data within a firm. I know many of you guys don't get into these weeds with this, but uh, having all this is critically important. Uh, if your quant is having to go out and churn through data and like, you know, dig through Snowflake and AWS tables looking for something, like I think there might be data available for something, I don't know, and they're just going through all this data, this is a huge waste of your time. You need a data engineering team that pipelines all the data in, stores it in the, the warehouses, make sure that it's quality data and that it's being kept properly and that there are proper security restrictions around that. Um, then you have the quants that should be building you know, the solution for this and then you should have quant devs doing implementation on this. And then finally, the business is using the model and giving you feedback if it's working or not. If you don't have that full structure, which most small firms do not, um, you have 
full stack quants, I'm going to put in air quotes, which is more or less like a firm that has no idea what they're doing. Um, they value a few people at the firm, like those that are, you know, friends and buddies getting investors to put money in and those that are big names that are just kind of running the firm, like the executives, but you're not going to have support to do quant work. If you don't have the support to do quant work, yes, it'll be an absolute miserable job um, because you won't have everything you need to do your job. Now, the second piece is quants, working with other quants. Small firms often don't have very many quants um, and often they're not good quality because finding good quants in general is super hard. Uh, when you have a large firm, say you have 10, 20, 30, 40, I don't know, 100 quants on a firm, yes, it is great to work with other quants because you can share ideas and bounce ideas off them. Um, that being said, many of the top hedge funds put you in silos and you are not allowed to talk or work with other quants, depending on the firm secrecy here. Some don't care, some do care. So some of these are kind of like a small firm in general. But when you have a lot of quants all working together, uh, you have a lot of opportunity for career growth and development um, and learning all these new technical skills because you're learning from other senior quants that are very good. When you're at a small firm, there's two, three, four of you. Um, you're either gonna be really great because all of you are really smart, um, the second scenario is one of you is really smart and the rest of you don't know anything. So it's not really good for anyone in that scenario, except for maybe the ones that don't know anything. Or you, most commonly you have three mediocre, four mediocre quants that are just kind of sitting and floating and churning out models. Um, same for data science with this as well, right? If you don't have a lot of depth of experience um, of looking at problems, defining problems and doing all this, it's going to be absolutely miserable. It's not going to be a good career opportunity. So that piece is, you know, beneficial as well. Now, the pros of this of why it'd be interesting to work in a family office or more specifically a smaller firm um, is because you're going to get a lot more responsibility, as I mentioned. So let's say you want to learn more of the full stack processes here. Um, you're going to be able to get more hands-on experience looking at all the different ventures here. Now, when I've worked on the sell side and these massive global funds, I'm talking trillion dollar banks, um, it's, it's, you know, you're going to get pigeonholed into doing a very, very specific job. Now, if you want to just be a quant and put your head down and just build models, it's awesome, right? Because you're going to be just building models and doing exactly what you love. You're not dealing with the headaches of employees and vendors and not having things and all that nonsense. Now, if you're wanting to develop more of the management skills, um, you're wanting to have more control over the process. So one advantage of why I went to a smaller fund um, was that they had, or a smaller fund, smaller firm here, is that um, I have more control over the whole process because there's less people in the way. So I can kind of move and shift my weight a bit and be like, we need to make this change because my team needs this change to make it easier. And I put pressure on another team to slide them over, hopefully, or move them off of a project or get something done, get some sort of resource here. So <laughs> in one of the last uh, podcast episodes I did, I talked about the challenges of getting companies to do changes. Uh, when you're at a smaller firm and you have someone who's really good in the quant space, which again, you're kind of taking a gamble here, but if they're great, um, there's someone like me a little bit here, I can move and push departments around and say, hey, I have to have this. I need this done now. We're making this change and I can rock the boat a bit. Um, and that makes things a little more enjoyable for quants underneath of you as well, working on these small teams. Because if you have a really good manager that's working there, there's not a lot of layers and communication issues that are getting lost through, you know, a vice president to an SVP to a managing director to a head of a department to like all this nonsense. Small firms are absolutely great in that sense. Another advantage as well is if you're kind of wanting to shift and transition a little bit um, to something new or different, um, in these small firms, right, you have this autonomy to kind of look at these different opportunities and different areas of the business. And so you're going to understand it better. Then if you want to transition back into a larger firm, it's much easier to say like, oh, I was doing model development or I was doing, I don't know, data engineering and quality perhaps, or I was doing implementation or something. Because you, if you've been doing all these different skills, right, you can kind of pick and choose now what is your specialty, we'll put in air quotes, uh, and you can just market and talk about those skills at the firm instead of telling them, well, I was actually doing the equivalence of three different departments or something. So it kind of gives you that opportunity to kind of shift around here. Now on the pay piece here a little bit, I can't verify that or not verify that. Um, I've seen really small firms way overpay for quants. I've seen really small firms way underpay for quants. Um, again, how do you define a quant? How do you determine quants? Now, if small family offices are hiring quants, they're probably not quants. So them hiring quants is going to be hard. They're just going to go find people that say, hey, I'm a quant. Uh, I want this job. And then they go, oh, he seems really smart. And they just put him in. <laughs> There's no quant validating the quants here. Um, but one reason I like to avoid this, so just to kind of wrap this up here, one reason I avoid small firms is there tends to be minimal rigor, 
minimal uh, structure, minimal dynamics. Like it, the article's somewhat right here. There's going to be a lot of challenges. There's not a lot of clear direction. Um, it really takes some rock star quant to join a fund or a firm, even a large firm. You need a really amazing quant um, to set the framework, set the structure, the training, the education putting all the pieces together uh, and making it a really rewarding experience for quants. Um, I'm going to say here too, if you're really concerned about your compensation, that's the only thing that matters to you. Oh, this firm's paying an extra $20,000 or something. Uh, you're probably not going to be the best quant in general anyways. Like a lot of quants, money matters. I know. Um, money is going to be a be a part of that, but also like you're wanting something that's going to be like rewarding. So if you find a small firm that is amazing and a great opportunity, right, you should jump on it because you might get more rewards back in the sense that you're building models that are having impact. You're kind of the front, mid and office uh, part of the quant spectrum. There is no layering and processing. Like you're getting all that reward, that hands-on experience, which is absolutely amazing here. Now also to consider those well is if there are not good quants and not good management, um, and there's a lot of expectations and no understanding of models, if you take this as a junior employer, even like a mid-level or senior level, it's going to be a nightmare because you're not going to have it. You need to get your job done. So you're going to fail. Uh, for junior quants, you're not going to learn that much because there's no one there senior to tell you this is right or this is wrong. And I see this a lot on LinkedIn and YouTube and you know, people in the industry. Uh, they just build a model. They take data and they slap something together. And they go, it's a model, right? Thumbs up, success. I built a model. But there's no one there to say this model sucks or this model wasn't built right. Or did you look at, I don't know, the number space on it? Or did you do robustness testing? Is there some sort of stress test you did for that? Or, you know, yeah, it's great you estimated it, but uh, that's actually not the correct model structure and it's not going to be robust in the estimations. And so the model structure is actually going to be wrong. Or maybe the model is not going to be proper for its usage. Now, there's all these things that you're not going to know and learn and understand unless you have a senior person teaching and training kind of walking you through that. Um, the other piece too you're going to miss out on is the soft skills, I feel. Um, so in big firms, often you don't get the opportunity to present. So that kind of sucks. But at the same time, there are often people that are like slowly working you through like your model documentation and giving you feedback. Um, really good managers at small firms and large firms are going to have you as a junior employee do some presentations. Um, so it helps you kind of train and build that. Those are things I would look at though in both big and small firms is how are you going to get through the process of learning how to communicate better. Documentation is critical. Small firms though tend to have garbage documentation because they just care about making money and getting from you know point A to point B as fast as possible. They do not care about replicating these things. They do not care about regulatory requirements. Um, but when these people leave and there's no documentation, then the whole thing blows up and it's a nightmare and there's no one that can regenerate the strategy or the model or anything because nothing was documented. So. Yeah, I would avoid small firms in general, guys. It's just, it's super risky. It's super sketchy. Um, regardless of comp and all that, you're probably not going to be that happy, especially as a junior employee. Now, if you're a senior employee, it is also a risk that that firm is going to actually support you and know what you're doing there and providing all the framework you need if they do not do that. So when you're a senior person going through interviews, looking to go to a small small firm, uh, make sure you interview with a bunch of the different executives and a bunch of the different departments here to try to grasp, are you going to have everything you need? Uh, if you don't have everything you need, are you going to have support to get that? Or is it going to be like, we just want you to build really cool models because it's fun and exciting. And then you get there and realize you don't have anything to build models with, and there's no really support or no resources for you to get your job, job done. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.